they give themselves and uh, this would be you know the last thing uh, that we say and we say on this show that yes uh, this is just uh, a judicial ruling this has to be a political settlement of this matter yeah. now those judges are now entering the courtroom uh, the court uh, is in silence and uh, as it were uh, the motions the rules of engagement uh, the lawyers and everyone in the room would stand for that respect and now the judges are taking their positions and uh, for that moment uh, where the courtroom and the last comment that I would make is that the judges are bowing down and taking their seat and we're going for lunch <laughs> hopefully Okay, thank you very much, pressman. Your time is over. That is one minute. Kindly, you can leave the room so that uh, we can proceed, please. Kindly, thank you. One minute, please, is over. Thank you. Thank you. One minute is over, please. <laughs> For delivery of judgment, consolidated petitions number three, four, and five of 2013, Raila Odinga and five, and, and five others versus the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission and three others. Welcome everybody and the Chief Justice now takes over from there. I take is the quorum is as before. Okay. Uh, after extensive deliberations, we are happy to announce the Supreme Court has reached a unanimous decision on all the four issues that fell for, for the determination in presidential election petitions number three, four, and five as consolidated. The following is the unanimous decision of the election held on March 4th, 2013, was conducted in a free, fair, transparent, and cre credible manner in compliance with the provisions of the Constitution and all relevant provisions of the law. It is the decision of the court that the said elections were indeed conducted in compliance with the Constitution and the law. As to whether the third and fourth respondents were validly elected and declared as President-elect and Deputy President-elect of the Republic of Kenya respectively, by the second respondent in the presidential elections held on 4th March 2013, it is the decision of the court that the third and the fourth respondents were validly elected. As to whether the rejected votes ought to have been included in determining the final tally of votes in favor of each of the presidential candidates by the second respondent rejected votes ought not rejected votes ought not for being included in calculating the final tallies in favor of each presidential candidate. As to what consequential declarations, orders, and reliefs that this honorable court ought to grant, 
based on the above determinations, the following are orders of the court. Petition number five of the consolidated petitions is hereby dismissed. Petition number four of the consolidated petitions is hereby dismissed. <coughs> As to petition number three of the consolidated petitions, <coughs> the prayer by the petition, petitioners seeking a declaration of recomputation of percentages by the second respondent is declined as the court has no jurisdiction. Regarding orders as to costs, the court orders that each party bears his, her, its own costs. Uh, the detailed judgment containing reasons for decision of the court will be issued within two weeks from today orders accordingly. Honorable Chief Justice, honorable members of the court, I have been asked by my colleagues, and if I have my, your permission, to thank you most profusely for the diligent manner in which you have conducted this historical hearing for the courtesy extended to all counsel and uh, to the spirit that you brought to the court of exchange of ideas and jurisprudence. We appreciate where you guided us uh, on those issues. We hope that uh, all of us have learned from this experience and we want you the to amount know. of time and energy and personal sacrifice you have brought to this determination. Thank you. I am reminded, uh, Chief Justice, if I have your permission still, to thank my colleagues. I thought I had already done that, but uh, let me also thank my colleagues at the bar, uh, both young and old, who I believe have demonstrated the highest level of professional ethics and etiquette, and especially the younger ones who have uh, revitalized our bar uh, in a very, very significant way. I thank you. Uh, we also, as a, as a court, we must appreciate and glorify the outstanding work done by the teams of council appearing before us, including uh, the amicus curia, the learned attorney general, in this presidential election petition. You are simply superb. You did excellent research into the issues of law and fact that engaged us in the petition. You helped us immensely in the interpretation of the relevant provisions of the Constitution. You are humorous and dignified. We saw a very healthy collective intellectual collaboration between the young and the older council. The mentorship that is going on at the bar must be encouraged. You have helped us com come up with some great nuggets in our emerging progressive jurisprudence on electoral justice, as well as raising jurisprudential issues for our own future scrutiny. With this kind of collaboration between the bar and the bench, there is no reason we cannot, in the future, export our progressive jurisprudence to the rest of the world. The last thing we want to say is, at this historical moment in our country, the Supreme Court has discharged its constitutional duty in conformity with the solemn oath each one of us took. It's, it's now for the Kenyan people, their leaders, civil society, the private sector, and the media to discharge theirs to ensure that the unity, peace, and sovereignty and the prosperity of the nation is preserved. God bless Kenya. Excuse, excuse, please. Let's maintain silence, please.